All right, now we're going to do something a little bit different. We didn't get to do it last year for, as Nathan would say, reasons. Um, but we're going to do something called Ignite Karaoke. Um, so what I'm going to ask is uh, five very uh, brave people uh, in, from the audience who have not, have, done, have not done an Ignite before, um, but would, uh, are, are totally open to the idea of, of talking to some completely random slides. So there's going to be five... Five people, uh, each one of those uh, persons will get uh, four slides that they've never seen before, and they just get to ad lib a uh, Ignite talk. So, who's it going to be? Or I'm going to start picking people. If I see, uh, if, you're, if your hand, does, I see this gentleman right here, Mark in the back there, come on down. Front row. Oh, wait, right here? Right, yep. Is that five? One, two, three, four. I need one more person. Oh, here we go. Come on down. All right, so we'll just have, uh, so the way it's going to work, folks, come on up to the stage. <laughs> There's no singing involved, unless you want to sing, you don't have to sing. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, the, it's going to be a little different because I'm not going to introduce everyone. There's just, the slide deck is, is going to start rolling, and um, as soon as you see um, that, um, that slide, uh, or this one here, then that means that you're done and it's your turn to hand the mic off to the next person. So just one slide per person? No, you're, getting, you're gonna get uh, four slides. Okay. So you're gonna get four slides. Just so just, just to give you, a, uh, no, you'll, you'll, get, you'll, you'll get the rhythm. Uh, you're, you're the bravest ones, it's your, your first, you're the bravest ones. Well, come, on, come out on the middle, come out on the middle. Nothing to be afraid of. Hi, my name is Min, and I'm here to talk to you about... Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so when I say go, you're going to be on, all right? Go. I'm going to talk to you about failure metrics. We all think we know what failure means. But do you really know what failure means? <laughs> Ask yourself that every time something bad happens because the bar can always go lower. <laughs> I don't know if Captain Picard ever visited this universe, but it is turtles all the way down and there is, you know, no limit to this infinity here. Um, metrics help us measure success by comparing it to the you know, total opposite. That right there is worse than a dumpster fire. It is a vehicle that is on fire, unlike a dumpster. A vehicle is moving, <laughs> and it doesn't necessarily stop. <laughs> Even when you roll a doggo into a bunch of dough, um, <laughs> it'll be what you yeast expected. <laughs> Great job. I swear, I swear that was not rehearsed. <laughs> oh, man. Gosh, I hope I do as good as she did. That was amazing, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Christina Nguyen from Rhythmic Technologies, and I'll be talking to you today about... Hold on, let me restart it. Okay. Oh, man. Lots of, lots of squares here, everyone. Um, there's a lot of green and red, so I imagine that's good and bad. But, you know, there takes a lot of steps to get to where you want to be. Um, and that top part is really important. That's You just got to remember that. And, you know, 99.9% of this is all bullshit. <laughs> so we're going to work with this one. <laughs> it's too much. Um, but yeah, this is going to be great. And uh, this blue box, I hear this is a bad box to see um, when it pops up on your screen. I have no idea what it does, but I hear if you put things into it, it does things back. Um, so I hope you guys do have good communication with this blue box. <laughs> and yeah, dogs are awesome. I am also a dog person. So, uh, you know, high five to everybody out there that is a dog person and I'm um, here today. <laughs> Nice work. All right, who's the next victim? 
Hi, I'm Sam, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk about whatever the next slide is. <laughs> All right, so when we're testing and monitoring things, you know, testing things and monitoring things is obviously important, and um, understanding why they don't work is also important, because then you don't get fired. So, um, uh, yeah, the other thing that's important is good UX. I think this is a great example. All, the customer has everything available to them. They can enter their data. They can ask questions about their data. They can click on really anything they want to. So this is really the type of thing that we want to go for. Um, the other thing that's important to have in a modern system is um, zero downtime deployment. So when you're changing from <laughs> one revision to another, you really want to time it well and, um, you know, not get hit by a rock. Um, and the last thing I think you know that's really important is a clear, you know, good keyboard shortcuts, straightforward ways of uh, invoking you know features that you need. Um, so, yeah, uh, right. That was a long 15 seconds. <laughs> Great job. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Oh, Mark, welcome. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm here to tell you about the four principles of effective DevOps. Oh. <laughs> Principle number one, 12 factors. <laughs> it's number one, but there are 12 factors. This is very important. There is the 12 are the one, the one is the 12. 12 factors, number one. Number two, number two. <laughs> Something you saw off Mythbusters. Mythbusters is the source of all truth in this universe. This looks like their um, Christmas machine, if I remember right. Point number three, aliens! <laughs> aliens will do all your DevOps for you. And finally, point number four, aliens. <laughs> Containers! <laughs> finally! Docker, 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 Docker. All right, nice job. All right, the last contestant. Thank you, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. I started this project three years ago, and I'm finally ready to talk in front of the audience. I want to help young people make better decisions. For example, developers or operations. In my community, I'm working to help teenagers delay pregnancy. This is what I've been working on. <laughs> right, so during the downtime, this is perfect because in the summer, summer they have a downtime. They're not in school, they don't have anything to do. This is the time that they usually get pregnant. So I think they should have a hobby such as a pet or a cat that can take up some of their time. That's one way to delay pregnancy, is to find something comparable for them to do with their time. And we know what happens with human beings. We all know what happens between the age of 10 and 20, so it should not be a surprise. We all have gone through it. We all have gone through this circle of life, so we all know what happens. So if we can predict, if we can predict teen pregnancy, then we can prevent it. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you.